بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ایکسپلورنگ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی ول کنٹینیو آر ڈسکشن آن دا ٹاپک ڈیفائن آر ریلیشن شپس کارڈینلٹی اینڈ کراس فلٹر ڈائریکشن سو ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیڈ میڈ دس ارینجمنٹ ویئر وی ہیڈ ارینجڈ آور فیکٹس اینڈ ڈائمینشن ٹیبل سو وی ہیو دا فیکٹ ٹیبلس ایٹ دا باٹم the boxes for the fact tables on the bottom and then we have the dimension tables on top of these boxes and then we have a special dimension which represents the snowflaking and that has been placed on the top so now we are going to create the relationships between the dimensions and facts table so first we are going to start off with the customer table so in the customer table we have a customer id which is the primary key for this table and obviously this customer id needs to be connected to the customer id inside the transaction data table so there are two ways of actually creating this relationship so i am going to show you both of these ways so whatever way you find convenient you can use that so the first way is that you go in the customers table and select the customer id then by using your mouse just press the mouse and drag this particular column this drag this particular column and places place this over the customer id in in the transaction data table so it is going to take a few seconds and it is going to show you as a line between these two tables so after a few seconds you will see a line between the, these two tables and, and if i put my mouse over this line or if i just hover my mouse over this line then you can see that the customer id column is highlighted on both sides of this line so this line is actually representing the relationship and if you uh, let me just zoom into this a bit more so that it is more clear or more evident that if you have a closer look at this so if i just over my mouse you can see that the customer id is highlighted on both sides and you are also going to see that there is this one box on the customer side there is this one uh, rectangle or a square and then there is this steric sign on the fact table side so this is actually representing a one to many relationship then there is also a small arrow which is pointing from the one side to the many side so the direction of this arrow is from the one side to the many side it is pointing towards the many side this is called as the cross filter direction so we are going to talk about the cross filter direction towards the end of this particular video so we have seen that the relationship bet between customers and transactions data has been created so we, there is no relationship between the customers table and the returns table because we do not see any customer id here now we move to the products table and i am going to now use the same method and i am going to select the product id here and then i am going to drag this and put it on the product id here in the transactions table so after a few seconds you are going to see that this relationship has been created so let me just zoom out a bit and you can see that this line has been created here which represents the one to many relationship between the products table similarly i can use the same method to create this relationship between the product products and returns table so you are going to see that the same kind of a relationship will be created between the product id in the products table and the product id which is the foreign key here and the returns table and again this is a one to many relationship so now we have seen that the relationships between the three tables in fact four tables have been created now we are going to have a look at this region and store so i did a mistake i had to actually i should have actually put the stores here and the regions on the top so that was a mistake on my side because this is the sub dimension because this has a foreign key here in the in the stores table so now i know that there is the primary key store id here and there is a foreign key store id here so now i want to create a relationship between these two tables and now i am going to show you another method through which we can create this relationship and this method is using the man manage relationship option here so this is the many manage relationship option here so just go and click on this manage relationships uh box here and it is going to show you the relationships that have already been created so these are the three relationships that we have already created 
now i am going to create click on new and now i am going to select the two tables so the first table that i am going to select is my stores table and the second table that i am going to select is my returns table so these are the two tables so automatically you you, you would see that it has selected store id and store id and it is telling you that the cardinality is one to many from store to returns and the cross filter direction is single because the arrow is point pointing from the one side to the many side and i am going to click on ok here and then i am going to click on close here so now you are going to see that this relationship that you see now is created between the stores table and the returns table so we have created an another relationship and you you would have noticed that if i select any of the uh, lines here any of the lines representing the relationship there is this uh, box here on the right which is the properties box so we are going to explore this box in a later video here it allows you to edit the relationship as well so once the relationship has been created you you can edit it here so now we have uh, two tables left one is the calendar table and one is the regions table i'm i'll come to the calendar table at the very last now i am going to focus here on the regions table so here the regions table is this this is the primary key and here the regions table has a foreign key so here this is a dimension here there is a dimension so i can just create the relationship and i am going to create it through the first method that i am going to just drag it here uh, the the region id or over this region id and now you can see that there is this line which is created between the regions table and the stores table and now we have a relationship between the two dimensions so this is this particular thing is called as a snowflaking so if you have a relationship between two dimensions where the primary key is being called as a foreign key in another dimension then this is called as the snowflaking right so now the only table left is the calendar table which is here on this side so we know that the calendar table has a primary key date but there are multiple dates in the transaction tables there are two dates stock date and transaction date and there is one date in the return date so first i am going to create this relationship between date and the return date here between the uh, calendar table and the returns table so you are going to see that there is this line that represents this relationship now just the relationship between calendar and transactions data is left and here we have two dates so we have the option to create two relationships between the calendar and transactions data each representing the date column in the transactions data table so first i am going to create a relationship between the date and the transaction date so you are going to see that a line is going to be created between the date and the transactions date and now i am going to use the same thing and do it for the stock date so now i have created a relationship between the date and the stock date and i am going to just zoom this little bit so that it is clear that here now you see that there are two lines that are visible but one of the lines is the normal line and this one this line is a dotted line so if you have multiple relationships between two tables like we have uh, between date and the stock date then the relationship which is created after the first one is represented by a dotted line and this dotted line says that this is an inactive relation so we are going to explore the active and inactive relationships in more detail in an other video but just remember that there can be just one active relationship between two tables so the any other relationship if you create then that relationship is going to be inactive so inactive means that the relationship is there but it is not going to work so you can change the active and inactive relationship so i can make this uh, as inactive and this as active but for that i will have to first change this into inactive so i will have both inactive and then i am going to convert the first dotted line into an active so you cannot have two active relationships as at the same time so this is the process through which we have now defined all the relationships in our data modeling process so you can say that now the data modeling process is complete as we have 
also define the relationships. Before closing this video, let's have a brief look at the cross filter direction. So we have already seen the cross filter direction, which is an arrow that is on the line that we see the one to many relationship lines that we saw. So we can have a single direction cross filter or we can have a bi-directional cross filtering. So we have just seen single direction cross filtering, which says that only one table in a relationship can be used to filter the data. So if you have a one, uh, if you have the cross filter direction set to a single direction. So in the, in our case, we see that it is being set from the one side to the many side. Then this effectively means that the debt, the filtering of data can only happen in one direction. So what is filtering of data? We need not need to worry about that in at this point in time, but you just need to know that this cross filter direction is telling you about the direction in which the data can be filtered. So if you have the bi-directional cross filtering, then it means that data can be filtered on one or both sides of a relationship. So lastly, just have a quick look at what is cardinality and cross filter direction combined. So if we have a one to one relationship, then the only option that is available to us is bi-directional cross filtering. So if we have two tables, and the relationship is one to one, then we just have the option to set it as a bi-directional. The relationship can only be set through a bi-directional cross filter. In case of a one to many, you have the option to set it as single or bi-directional. So if we have seen that for, for our example, we have set it as a single. And if you have a many to many relationship, then you can choose to filter in a single direction or in both directions by using the bi-directional cross filtering. So if in case of a many to many relationship, you also have the option to set in a single or both direction. The ambiguity that is associated with bi-directional cross filtering is amplified in a many to many relationship because multiple paths will exist between different tables. So we are going to look at this particular sentence in more detail in another video. So you need not worry about this. Just keep this thing in mind that if you have a many to many relationship and, and with that you have bi-directional cross filtering, then you are going to have multiple paths in your data model that can be used for filtering and that can actually create ambiguous results. So unless you are certain what what your data looks like when aggregated these types of open-ended relationships with multiple filtering directions can introduce multiple paths through the data so it is just something that i just explained that this can create ambiguity in your data model and we are going to explore this in more detail in an other video so we have in this video seen how to create relationships between facts and dimensions we also saw a special case of relationship between two dimensions that is called as a snowflake schema. So we are going to talk about snowflake schema in another video where we are going to talk about the concept of normalization and denormalization. Then we saw that what are the ideal relationships that should be there in a data model and we saw that all of the relationships should be one to many like we have in this particular example and the cross filter direction for all these relationships should be from should be a single and it should be from the one side of the relationship to the many side so this is the ideal data model and lastly we saw about the active and inactive relationship so we are again going to talk about the active and inactive relationship in a bit more detail in some other video so this was a very important video from an exam point of view that you need to understand that for a data model, you need to have different types of relationships, which are also referred to as the cardinality. So make, make sure that you are familiar with these concepts. And if you are not familiar, just make sure that you watch the video uh, again and make sure that you understand all the key words that have been used, all the key terminologies that have been explained in this video. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.